Okay, just a couple of topics here. We've talked about how lone pairs affect the bond angles. They usually shrink them. Um, we really just got to talk about sigma and pi bonds and hybridization. So if we draw a molecule here, like this guy, you have single bonds. You have a triple bond, another single bond, another single bond, and then a double bond. Cool. With complex molecules, there's a couple of different things you got to worry about. One, is there a single central atom? No, there's no single central atom. But you can look at any one of these atoms, potentially, that's not on the outskirts anyways, as being a localized central atom. So like if I look at this guy, how many domains does this carbon have? Four. What's his hybridization then? SP3, what are his bond angles? His angles all around him are all 109.5. The shape around him is tetrahedral. OK, great. How many electron domains around him? Not four. How many directions total? Just two directions. So notice a, a triple bond just counts as one direction, one domain. And so just two domains. So with two domains, what's his hybridization? SP, what are his bond angles? 180. What is the shape called around him? Linear. Great. So for any single atom in the middle here, you could look at all his specifics. OK. Here's the last part. There are two types of bonds, it turns out. Sigma bonds and pi bonds. And it turns out that all single bonds are all sigma bonds. So single and sigma go together. It's kind of convenient. The Greek letter sigma looks like this. Sigma, 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 sigma. Sigma, sigma. All single bonds are sigma bonds. Turns out you only have what we call pi bonds when you have a double or a triple bond. Now here's the deal. When you have a double or a triple bond, though, the first bond is always sigma. So all single bonds are sigma. But even when you have a double or a triple bond, the first one is a sigma. But you can only have one sigma bond between two atoms. So if you have a double bond, the first one is sigma. And with the triple bond, the first one's also sigma. But because you'll only have one, then any additional bonds must be the other type, which are called pi bonds. Double bond then is one sigma and one pi. A triple bond would be one sigma bond and two pi bonds. And so first, you just got to recognize how to count up the number of sigma and pi bonds in a molecule. You may get a question on the test that just gives this molecule and says, the following molecule has blank sigma bonds and blank pi bonds. And you just count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This guy has eight sigma bonds. And obviously, one, two, three pi bonds. That would be the solution to that question. OK. So the second part of this is you have to know what a sigma and a pi is. So it turns out we've talked about electron, you know, we've talked about bonds. What really makes up a bond? Sharing electrons. Sharing electrons. Sharing electrons. And each bond is two electrons. Well, notice if I'm just a single atom, then my electrons might live in an S, a P, or a D what? Orbital. orbital. For single atoms, they live in orbitals. But when two atoms come together and they share them, it turns out that this guy has his orbital, this atom over here has his orbital, and when they come together, the orbitals overlap. And when those orbitals overlap, they're sharing them in overlapping orbitals. That's the way this works. Well, you can overlap any two kind of orbitals. And as long as you overlap them in an end-to-end -end fashion, that's called sigma bond. So it's end-to-end overlap of orbitals. And it can be any kind of orbital can be involved. S orbitals, P orbitals, technically D orbitals, or any of the hybrid orbitals we kind of alluded to earlier as well. However, pi bonds are much, much, much more specific. So notice sigma and pi are letters in a different alphabet. Whose alphabet? Greek. Greek. Pi, what's the analogous? We, our, our English alphabet's based on the same alphabet the Greek is, the Phoenician one. So what is the Greek letter pi? What's the American letter that's analogous to that? Letter P. And a pi bond is always the overlap of what kind of orbital? P orbitals. But it turns out it has to be sideways, not end to end. Sideways 
overlap, and it has to be p orbitals. So if you look here, just a couple quick examples. If you look at a molecule of like H2, Lewis structure for H2 looks just like that. But if I have a single hydrogen atom, hydrogen only has one electron, what kind of orbital is it in? 1s1, it's in an s orbital. s orbitals are spherical. And so if you have two hydrogen atoms, they'll come up next to each other, and the s orbitals overlap. And this is another way of representing a bond where you have overlapping orbitals and they're sharing two electrons in those overlapping orbitals. In this case, when they overlap end to end, that is a sigma bond. The same thing as if you had, say, Cl single bonded to Cl. In this case, chlorine has his unpaired valence electron in a p orbital. And so does this chlorine. And if they overlap in an end-to-end -end fashion, again, that is, again, referred to as a sigma bond. But if you had a couple of atoms, and these atoms already had a single bond right there, well, they only typically have orbitals pointing towards each other, one each. And so you can only make one bond right between them. And so what they do at, after that point is they take one of their p orbitals that's in a different plane, and they overlap sideways. They overlap in two places here, but that's one bond. And that is what depicts the kind of overlap we need for a pi bond. A sigma bond, any kind of orbital can be involved as long as it's end to end, that's sigma. But if you have sideways overlap of p orbitals, that's a pi bond. You should kind of know the definition, but also be able to recognize them in an overall structure.